Winds down to the Avalu River from here. Do you think there's a chance of getting across? Well, a chance maybe, but I'd hate to try it after dark. What about that house? It's a little higher than the others. The flood may not have reached inside. Yeah, let's give it a try. There. Someone may be at home up there. Might. I'll get your bag and basket. I do hate that feeling. It began out there in the garden. You know that horrid feeling that, that somehow all this has happened before? That? Oh, sure, everybody gets that. It's called deja vu, already seen. Already seen. But not all of it. Something else. Like something yet to come. Bedrooms are fine. Both of them. But I thought these could do with an airing. <laughs> Miss Bartley, I kind of feel as though I've let you down. Why? Well, it seemed as though it was pretty important for you to get through to Carytown. It was. But staying undrowned is more important. <laughs> anyway, I think this is going to be fun. It certainly is an experience. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I was only trying no, to... No, I think you're probably right. Nothing makes a woman happier than the prospect of a dirty house and a hungry male. <laughs> well, which do you cope with first? That's strange. But the feeling is so strong. I knew every word you were going to say. What did you mean earlier when you said there was something yet to come? You can hear the wind in the trees. Do you think it'll bring the rain again? You haven't answered my question. I can't explain. Perhaps it's just the odd feeling of coming to live in someone else's house. Live? Well, I mean stay. <laughs> well, under the circumstances, I hardly think the owners could object. Mr. Cobb, have you noticed how curiously impersonal this house is? What kind of people do you think live here? I like them. They gave us shelter for the night, didn't they? But it's so cold. No family portraits or books. And the wardrobes upstairs are all empty. Well, I suppose they took some of their personal things with them when they left. I hope they got through to Kerry Town. I'd like to find out who they are, so we could thank them. Mm. I'm sure they'd like to know that their house isn't badly damaged. Some new curtains. And I'd like to see a nice, bright-colored carpet in here, wouldn't you? Do you think perhaps a lemon yellow would be nice? Ah! Oh, it's a bat! Get it off me! <laughs> Just a flying squirrel. Look at it. See? <laughs> Must have gotten trapped in the chimney. Look at him. <laughs> Miss Bartley, hmm? you've forgotten something. What? One hungry male. Oh, just like a man. He's cute. I'll put him out the kitchen door. <laughs> Miss 
Bartley, can I ask you a question? What about? Well, about a young lady traveling alone. Oh, I won't be alone much longer. Thank heavens. Are you meeting your mother in Carytown? No. I'm getting married. Married? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, no wonder you were in such a hurry to get there. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, no. Uh, Not more rain. Well, maybe it won't last. I think I better check my horses for the night. trying to find anything out there. Are you sure you saw I something? I told you I was just imagining things. Here. Thanks. I put out some brandy by the fire inside. I thought it might be warming. No, thanks. It's a uh, very old brandy. Can I pour you some? No, thanks. Miss Bartley, are you sure you've never been in this house before? Why did you ask that? Well, the way you know where everything is. You seem so much at home. Oh, that's just a woman's intuition. I'm going to pray tonight. I saw the light. I'm Sarah Bartley, and uh, this is Mr. Cobb. Jess Belden, ma'am. Pleased to meet you. Won't you come by the fire and get warm? You could dry your coat. I'm sorry I can't offer you anything to eat, but I have some coffee ready. Oh, that'll be fine. We thought we heard somebody outside. I used to know the people who lived here. I saw the lights, looked through the window, thought I'd better find out what a stranger's doing here. Oh, uh -huh. we got caught in the flood. You too? Yeah, the river's still rising. Mm -hmm. We're on our way to Carytown. Oh? Uh, Miss, um, the young lady as well? Yeah, she's getting married. Bad luck being held up like this. Yeah. You will, of course, stay the night, Mr. Belden. I'd be very grateful. And we'd like the company, too. Thank you. Oh, won't you have some brandy with us? Uh, yes, thank you. It's an unusual ring. I hadn't noticed you wearing that before. Of course I was. It's my engagement ring. Oh, Mr. Belden, what about your horse? You could put it with the others in the shed at the back. Oh, I'd better take care of that right away. Oh, would you just mind checking mine while you're out there? Sure. Sure. Thanks. Bartley, I'd like to know the truth. You know that man, don't you? Jess and I met two years ago. In this house. Why all this pretense? I'm sorry. 
But I couldn't tell you the truth until I knew whether you would come or not. Now we need your help. You mean you were expecting him to come here? It was no accident our coming to this house. I prayed that Jess would be able to find his way here too. Find his way from where? Jess escaped from prison. But he's innocent, Mr. Cobb. Innocent of what? They said he killed a man. Isn't it kind of dangerous you're telling me all this? I'm praying you'll help us get away in your coach. Well, where are you planning to go? I have enough money for a trip to England if we can get to the coast. The police will be coming here for him. In your coach, we'd have a chance. Miss Bartley, there's only one thing wrong with your story. What? The nearest prison is 70 miles away outside the flood area. I only assumed that was how he got away. Well, you seem pretty sure about that wall being washed away. You think I'm lying? Your record for truth tonight is not very reassuring, is it? That was different. I couldn't tell you the truth then. Or now, it seems. Well, maybe Jess will. You know. I can guess. I think he escaped all right, but it wasn't from prison, was it? How long was he there? A year. A whole year of misery and hell for him. How can I let him go back to that? If we could get abroad. Mr. Cobb, I've heard of places in Switzerland where they've had miraculous cures, and I could be with him all the time. Oh, he needs that, Mr. Cobb. He needs my love. And what about the hospital here? Hospital? Each week they let us spend half an hour together. And the doctor watches and listens. Well, there's one thing you haven't told me. Jess did kill the man. But you said he wasn't guilty. He wasn't responsible. He had no choice. When it happened, he... He didn't know what he was doing. Mm. Mr. Cobb, I should warn you before he gets back that Jess can be difficult if he talks at all about his illness. He doesn't remember anything about the killing? No, none of it. At the trial, he... Sure. You said your husband killed this man in self-defense. He thought he was defending me. Jess was always unreasonably jealous. We had very few friends, and he was away a lot on farm jobs. I needed something to fill those days. So I began to build a garden. I've always loved flowers. At first, Jess was happy about it. Then he began to talk about the garden as if, as if it were a person. How do you mean a person? Somehow in his poor mind, the garden developed into a living thing. It had moods and desires. He began to believe it had grown a mind, which was trying to possess me. Well, didn't you have him see a doctor? Yes, as soon as I realized what he was doing come back from the farm and, and watch me. Oh, I can't tell you. I can't. Oh, then those days, I hardly remember the trial. Well, you were quite a woman to face the risk of it happening again. No, it couldn't. Now that I know her, I'll never leave him alone. You'd always have to live with that fear. 
At the moment, I live with nothing. Fear I can manage, but not loneliness and despair. Mr. Cobb, will you take us to the coast? Now, you yourself told me that your husband can become violent. Don't you think his hope lies with the doctors and not yet with you? Is that your answer? I can only help in the way I think best. There's only one way. Take us to that ship. I'm sorry, I can't do that. I'd like to make an early start in the morning. I think that's mine. Where'd you get it? I bought it. I don't think I'd have sold you a gun. Well, you better be careful. That's loaded. I checked. Six bullets. You won't make any trouble in the morning, will you? What do you want? Answers. Who are you? Your wife told you I'm Christopher Cobb. Christopher Cobb is dead. <laughs> Trying to do what was best for her, for you. You better leave that to me. I'm the only one who can help you. If you can tell me your name, that'll be a start. Do you know it? I've told it to you. Here, look at these. Look, why don't you just tell me what you already know? All right. I know that you took the coach and that you shot the driver. And Sarah told me that you're keeping her prisoner here. She told you that? Well, she was frightened. She saw you hiding the gun. But Sarah seems to think that you'll stop us using the coach in the morning. Your wife would say just about anything to get hold of that coach in the morning. You wouldn't try to stop us, would you? No. But I'll be driving. Walk up. Everything Sarah said, she was lying. Well, your wife thought she had a good reason. She was trying to turn you against me. Why? She wanted me out of the way. We didn't agree over something. About the coach? Yes. I know. She wanted to take me away somewhere. That's right. I see now. She told me you both escaped together. Escape from where? From the asylum. 
When I heard you'd got out, I knew you'd find a way here somehow. What are you saying? You've got to help me convince her, Cobb. The doctor said that all she needs is one more year in the hospital. I can't force her to go back. Mr. Cobb, no matter what he thinks or says, I still want to take him with me. And I mean to. It doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter which of us you think is lying. Or even both. Jess is weak. He needs my strength. Jess, suppose you tell us what happened out there by the summer house. No, he... He lies about it. I thought you said he didn't remember it. Remember? If I close my eyes, I can still see it. Tell me. No. Tell me about the garden that grew a mind that became a person who wanted to hurt Sarah. I killed her. Because I loved him. I couldn't lose him. She wanted to take him from me. Sarah, stop. She... Look. The light's coming, Jess. We should make a start. Now. Why not ask what he wants? Oh, Jess, you do want us to be together, don't you? Of course I do, Sarah. You know that's why I want you to finish your treatment. Then we can... No! I thought you said you loved your husband. I do. I do! I don't think you even know the meaning of the word. Jess, come now. We can take the coach together. If you try to stop us, I'll kill you. Take him now and you may lose him forever. Oh, stop. Yes, make him stop. You remember the summer house, the garden? Can you bear to live with him knowing it might happen again? No, it won't. I won't let it. It won't happen again. It is happening right now. It is happening again. I told you when the rain stopped, I was going to get married again. That's what I longed for, to start over again with Jess. That's exactly what you can do for Jess. Jess, I will go back. I want to. 